Hi guys, this is FK and um, since last week I have discovered this new library called HTMX. Yes, 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 you didn't read it wrong. This is HTMX. The L has been replaced with X. And uh, what this library does is that, I just go to the introduction here. It's so HTMX gives you access to AJAX, CSS transitions, web sockets, and server sent events, that's SSEs, directly in HTML using attributes. Yeah, you no longer have to write JavaScript to make all this happen. You can use your normal HTML attributes to make all these amazing interactions, amazing uh, behaviors happen on your web pages. And you know I love anything that makes life easier. So I just start to get on it and start um, hacking, hacking it. I'm start, uh, just tinkering with it. Um, so they said the motivation behind it is that they don't want it to be that only arefs and form tags would be the one to make http requests you should be able to make http requests with other html tags uh why should only click and submit trigger events uh why should only get and post be the available method so it's just a whole lot of goodies and um in this video i'm just going to be giving you some sort of some sort of htmx hello world yeah like hello world to htmx so let's uh sync our teeth right into it you can get the docs here just click the docs link and they have this very amazing documentation i think it's all on one page i think so yeah but that, there are still different sections but this this introduction seems to be all on one page and you can navigate it here so let's like i said let's do a little uh atmx uh atmx yeah let's do our hello world in atmx now to do that i'm going to be uh working with your ajax um features so i already have a node.js server running here so i have a node.js server running here of port 1330 and it's just a very simple server nothing big no big deal here it has two routes a get route which is a base route uh, that just says welcome to the node api and a message route for a post request so i just have to have a post request because i'm going to be that's what i'm going to demo i'm going to demo a post request so the post uh, endpoint just returns a json object that has two properties message and role uh message says this results from uh a post request and the role is just post request. just just some gibberish to get things rolling um then let us write our htmx page the first thing we're going to do is um we are going to create a new file i'm just going to create a new file let me go to my command line go back and just create a new file um let me open another tab on the command line where am I? PWD. Okay, so I can also just go to the out of here and say touch um, HTMX hello world. Hello world. That's HTML. Yeah. HTML. So we have that. And I'm just going to open this up in a browser. This just let me open my. Yeah, yeah, there's a file. I'm going to open it up in a browser. Yeah, we have the request. We have the request, but I'll prefer to open this up in Chrome. So I'm just going to take this and go to Chrome because I want the developer tools, the Chrome developer tools. Yeah, let's stick that in. Okay, so we have that loaded up. Oh, no, let's do that again. Yep, we have the page, nothing on the page for now. I'm going to bump up the zoom level to 150 so that we can see this clearer. Good. So we have that and we can start coding with HTMX. Let's open this in Visual Studio Code. Yeah, VS Code, VS Code, VS Code. Yeah, VS Code, let's open the VS Code. Yeah, this is the file, now we have the file. Let's get going and scaffold our HTML5. Yeah, let's wrap this view. Let's pull this to the side. Now, now we can begin our HTMX hello world so what I'm just going to be doing here is using the Ajax properties like I said to call our node.js server but before I do that I need to bring in HTMX and this is one of the things I like about it that I I, I started using front front-end frameworks from the time of backbone marionette and the rest and uh, I also used angular one and I loved it because just like jQuery you just need to add, add a file and just get going it's not like uh, these days where you are working with React or working with Angular and you have all this setup, all these build tools, all these configurations you have to do on your system. No, this is as simple as using jQuery and that's, that is what drew me to this library. It's just as simple as using something like jQuery. You bring it in and you start using it straight up. So let's go to the HTMX um, website and get the file. Let's go to the uh, installing. Yeah, go to installing. And I'm just going to copy this. 
just get it from the CDN. So it's on CDN, copy that, and we're ready to go. You can also download a local copy so that you can have that, and this is what is recommended in production. They don't recommend you using the CDN in production, so just take note. So uh, let's put this here. Yeah, we should have HTMX working now. And like I said, we're just going to do a simple Ajax call. So how do we do that? I'm going to put a div. Now I'm using a div specifically because you can use any any element to make an, an Ajax call. Yeah, you can use any element to make an Ajax call. So I'm going to be using a div, um, and I'm going to be using the HTT, HTMX post. HTMX post, I believe. No, HX post, sorry. <laughs> yeah, they have these attributes I always uh, prefix as HX, so HX post. And I'm going to be calling my API, which is at localhost, colon 1330, and the post, post endpoint, which is message. So I'm going to call that. You can call that. And within the div, I'm just going to put something to make us know where the div is and click it. So I'm say post to server. Just set post to server. So we're just going to be doing this. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we're going to be doing for now. Now, when when we click this div element, it's going to send a post request to this endpoint, and it's going to automatically replace this div with the response of the post request. Yeah, that's what that's the default um behavior. The uh, request is going to be triggered by a click. The click click is the default trigger, and um, the default behavior is that this whole thing is going to be replaced by the response from the server. But we're going to extend that functionality much later. Let's just see what we get from here. So we have that. Let's go back to Chrome. Let's refresh the page. Now we have this. Uh, let's open the yeah Dev Tools so that we can see the request. See the request. Dev Tools come up. Yeah, Dev Tools. Nah, when did I make it? Ang. I need it. Do we take it back to? Oh no, not the toggle device bar. What gets it back to this yeah so i'm just going to put it by the side yeah put it back by the side good and what we need is a network tab so let's go to network so that we can inspect whatever hmx is doing behind the scenes good so so we have our page and now if we click this if we click this it's going to send a post request to our server that's not just server that is running and we're going to get a response that replaces this so let's do that bam straight up it's yeah it definitely so fast because everything's on my system but you can see how quick that is it sent the post request which you can see here this is, the, this is it calling the message route um let's go to headers okay let me let me click this okay yeah that was just loading up so uh let me go back to this yeah so you see the headers it calls our endpoint that is http one that one three three zero slash message is a post request 200 okay and you can see we didn't have to write any javascript to make this happen we just used tags yeah we just used attributes and we got our message back fantastic so like i said that's the default behavior well, sometimes you might not want this sometimes you might want um to trigger it by something else let's say trigger it by a mouse over or something like that so let's see what we can do with that let's see let's go back to there now if you want to trigger it using any other event type you can simply use the hx trigger let's say hx trigger and I can say mouse mouse over. Yeah. When you mouse over it, the event should be triggered. It should trigger the post request when you mouse over this text. So I'm just going to um save that. Go back to Chrome. Let's refresh this. And now I'm just going to slightly over over this. Let me first clear this. Let me clear the request here. Yeah, let me clear this. And let me just go to xhr yeah filter by xhr so i only see xhr request so yeah you see it's already <laughs> it's already triggered because i uh mouse over it but let me let me refresh that uh then just slightly just watch my hand and mouse over boom yes sends the post request you can see here we have the post request and it's going fine now this 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 event handling can be uh triggers can be modified you can modify them let's say you want to delay it or tr throttle it you can you can do that with um uh some more uh values inside the attribute so let's let's go and do that let's say we want to make sure that yeah we want this to trigger when you mouse over but after five seconds so you can say delay colon 5ms i believe five 
colon 5 colon 5 is it 5 or 5 ms uh, let me just look at the documentation real quick um let's see trigger 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 modifiers yeah we've got trigger modifiers let's see okay yeah yeah the ms is there so um yeah let's just do 5 ms let's do 5 ms that'll be 5 millisec 5 millisecond no not 5 ms let's do 5 s yeah one five seconds not five milliseconds that'll be too fast so we trigger this on mouse over but we wanted to call the api uh, after five seconds so let's test that out um let's refresh this once again okay now when we mouse over it see the request isn't fired it's going i guess it's like three four bam five yeah it triggered that after five seconds awesome everything done with attributes you're not writing any javascript is simply done with attributes so this is just fantastic and amazing now let's say we don't want this response to replace the element that triggered it we want it to we want it to show up in another div yeah once show up in another div we can simply just go back first i think i like the click so i'm going to stay with the click and i'm just going to remove all these triggers and just going to go with the click now um to do that uh, let's create another div it's a div let's put some sort of <laughs> this is a bit lazy and put a paragraph in here just to put some space um let's say um results down here results down here cool 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 and then the results appear here now this div we're going to give it an id say results we just say results oh sorry that went out of the colibri of the codes so say results so that has an idea of results so this div we're going to be putting our response into now to make sure that this is what make uh, this uh response goes into this div we use the hx target we tell it we want to target a particular element with a and you put the contents inside so hx target and that will be we use a css selector and paste results hx hx target hx dash target results so when this makes the api call it's going to put the results here and not swap this entire element with the results so let's save that go back i'm going to refresh this again and if i click this makes the call and puts the result down here awesome just simple straightforward you it's happening the way you want it you're basically just declaring you're basically just declaring behavior so this is supercharging html to have behavior the behavior that javascript gives it so it's uh it's, it's just amazing to have code that clean do such amazing stuff so there's so many other things you can do css transitions you can do animations you can integrate it with some third party tools and stuff like that you can add your own custom scripting and all those kind of things it's it's just amazing what you can do you can you can even do um progress yeah you can do progress bars uh you, so that when uh the api request is being made there's a progress load uh, there's a there's a loading indicator there's a progress indicator rather showing up so i love htmx i must say first the simplicity i am already getting overwhelmed with build tools and learning a lot of stuff just to use a particular framework with this you can quickly build up stuff for example you want to build like a personal profile website you just want like four pages you can quickly use this you don't have to set up react or next.js or nox.js for view and stuff like that you can just use this to get what you want to get done done and it can also be used in bigger projects we've not even explored the server side events and the web socket real-time attributes that it comes with so this is amazing i'm still going to be doing so much content on this uh probably a course i will let you know i'll let you guys know probably a, a full course on this but i'm loving htmx i'm loving htmx i'm loving what it can do and i cannot wait to see how much the uh developers continue to improve this and just make front-end development much easier so that is my hello world to you guys see you in another video